Hello everyone and welcome to Total War Rome 2. So as of this recording, this game is brand new, just came out. Um, we're gonna have some fun showing this off. So let's go ahead and let's get right into a new campaign. So when you click on new campaign, it brings up your selection of cultures that you can be. You can be Rome, Carthage, uh, the Eastern Empires, Britannic Tribes, Gaelic Tribes, Successor Kingdoms, and Germanic Kingdoms. And if you pre-ordered it, you can be the Greek States. Uh, this is DLC. You can be, you know, whatever. So, do we actually want to be Greek States? Is the question. I think the answer to that is no. Um, we might, you would think we'd be Rome because this is a Rome game, but I think everybody's gonna be Rome. Maybe not everybody. You know what? Screw it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're gonna have to be Rome, and we're actually gonna be the uh, the Julia. I, I like House Julia. Um, that's who I usually play when I play Rome One. For some reason, I just like because they're red. <laughs> Alright, so um, when you click on a, on a culture, it gives you a brief background of the culture overall, and then the factions, it gives you a, a description of the factions here, and all the factions have different uh, bonuses and negatives. Um, so the House Julia, they have Cultural Oppressors, which is, um, is a 25% public order penalties uh, due, to for due to the presence of foreign cultures, but they also have... Uh, plus four to culture conversion, which when you when you conquer a place, um, it slowly turns it from you know their culture to yours. Barbarian subduers, blah 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 blah. Let's go ahead and start this campaign. Um, initial challenge of easy. We'll go ahead and keep game difficulty on normal. I don't know if I want to do easy. Eh, yeah, screw it. You are at war with the Etruscan League. March north and capture their territories. This will allow you to consolidate Italia and ensure the safety of Rome. You must wage war if you hope to extend your dominion. Syracuse and Carthage own territory in Magna Graecia, so conflict with them is inevitable if you wish to expand across the Mediterranean. Otherwise, they may prove useful allies against Etruria or the Gaulish tribes to the north. Come what may, Rome will triumph. Hooray! Alright. So this is the advisor. Oh, I hope I went in and turned that guy off. Advice settings. Um, yeah, go ahead and suppress that. <laughs> Those guys can be really annoying. Alright, uh, so objective issued. Um, Ascent to my bold undertakings. From humble beginnings come great things. Take your first step and establish a foothold from which to launch your people to greatness. Completely control two provinces, either by direct ownership or through client states and military allies. Uh, bonus objectives have been added, and then we get a reward for it. Alright. So I guess just kind of a brief overview of the of the world map here. So this is obviously the world map. <laughs> uh, we have our uh, military and our agent tokens just hanging out. Uh, we have our settlements. Um, now something that they've changed in this game, and I don't remember if it's the same, it's kind of similar in, um, Shogun, in Shogun 2, but, I mean, they've, they've really kind of changed it in this one, it's, it's really kind of nice. So, there's two different types of territories, there are settlements, which are the individual towns, and then there's provinces, and provinces is a group of settlements. So, like, if we click on Roma here, so, the, it's the province of Italia, but its settlements are Roma, uh, Nepolis, Armenium, and Velathri. I think, I think, I'm probably butchering those names a little bit, but, you know. So, the, the city, the, the settlements themselves will give you bonuses, but overall they work together, um, to have the whole province become stronger. So, like, any units that are in that province gain a benefit from every single, um, settlement. So, um, the way that kind of works is like, um, in this one, your military units will recruit more, will recruit more units right from the token themselves. Like, so you don't build them in the city anymore and send them, you know, you don't link them up. You just select which army you want to, you want to make bigger 
and then you can tell it which units you want to recruit. <laughs> and that's kind of nice. Um, but where it gets actually kind of cool is like, so here, um, Roma has the, the ability and has the Fields of Mars, which is what allows us to, to recruit um, more units than just... Commander. Where are they? Than just the just the uh, the levies. Um, but we don't have to be in Roma to get those recruits. We can be in uh, Nepolis. Uh, if we own them, we can be in Armenium and uh, Velathri. We can be in any anywhere in this province, and it allows us to recruit more more people to this um, for orders. to this army. Um, as you already kind of saw, when you clicked on when you click on any of the cities in a province, it'll bring up this list so that we can build more things we can expand the city to make more construction um so yeah so when this says undeveloped land we need three like this little population uh surplus right here um this determines when, when we can expand our settlements so i think the capital is independent from the other four settlements uh i think it gets its own but you can only like this will say four right here to get um, this settlement bigger and I think once we have Armenium and Velathria um, regardless of how many people or how many um, building sites are already there it's four for each of them I think uh, we will have to double check that um, so yeah uh, let's go ahead and check our objectives so on our objective scenes, on our objective screen, it has our chapter objectives, which is our current like this is chapter one for whatever, and it has our ultimate objectives, which is victory for the game. And there's three of those: there's military, economic, and cultural. And I think we can win e e um, either of these or any of these. Uh, on our chapter, on our chapter screen, it has our primary primary objective, which is the completely hold the two provinces, which is all of Italia, which is this one. Or all of uh, Magna Gracia, which means we have to capture these two down here. The side objectives are assertion of power, hold at least one, hold the entirety of at least one of the following provinces. So all of Italia, all, all of Magna Gracia. Bonus objectives, subjugate this faction by making them your client, uh, which is the Etruscan League. Uh, they hold, I believe, three settlements. Um, the two in Italia, and then this one down here. Which is these two islands, actually. Interesting. And then the final one is be at war with the following faction, Carthage. So we get money for completing these, so we're going to want to do that for sure. For show. Sure. Um, oh, when you click on a settlement, these down here give you options to look at. So this is the province overview, so we can see what buildings we have. It's details, so we can see our overall income and wealth, public order, culture, security. These are all the you know the specifics of the settlement. We can raise more forces, which allows us to build more armies and more uh, fleets. Um, so we can only have a total of three armies and two fleets right now. Which, I, I think this is kind of interesting. It kind of prevents you from just spamming the crap out of units, like individual small units, and then just trying to really, um, like, flood the board. We'll see how, how effective a strategy that is, though. Like, I kind of like it, but we'll see. And then you can also recruit more agents. Which, right now, we only have access to spies, and there's also a limit on the number of agents you can have. We can, we can currently only have one of each. Uh, but in order to get a dignitary and a champion, we have to research... Um, some things. Um, well, I guess we're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> so after objectives, there's the trade and influence, which this gives just a quick overview of our finances. You know, our taxes, our save, our slave population, trade, um, just other total income, army upkeep. You know, the whole thing, the whole shebang. We can adjust our tax level. Research um, allows us to research either military or civic improvements to our empire um which well supposedly um the ai can't because like it says to give you uh, a unique advantage over your enemies so i don't know if the ai can has access to a tech tree um that wouldn't be fair i don't think if they didn't but you know whatever and then we have diplomacy 
which shows us all of our current known factions, all the all the factions that we know of in the world, and then we can do, um, like we can talk to them, we can trade and stuff. Like we currently have a trade agreement with Syracuse. These cats down here, um, they're a little mad at us though, because of treaties with Carthage. Ooh, seriously? Just woke up from a nap. That's bullshit. Although I, I was playing this game for like 12 hours before. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, alright. Alright, so let's get this party started. First thing we want to do, we want to move this spy up here. So we can get a look at Velathria. The hammers of... Blah, blah, blah. Let's go ahead and get up here. So something else that they've changed about this that I really like is... Uh, spies and other agents... Um, they have a much higher success, especially spies, they have a much higher success rate of um, carrying out like assassinations and like fucking with cities. Um, so it's a lot easier to get them to get them levels, which uh, if you play to run one, Commander. it's ridiculously hard. Like you lose spies. They're really only good for scouting in Rome one. You I mean, have further orders? They're okay, but I mean they're not they're not great. On the move! Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and do some city management. So we want to go ahead. This is four versus three. We want to go ahead and expand this city, and we want to build. We already have a consecrated ground, so we don't need that. Uh, we're gonna want this public forums. Build that, and then here and. Okay, so it's only one. Oh, I, shit! I suppose I should have shown that off. So when you expand a city. Well, I'll just show it off here in, uh, Brundisium. Oh, they have negative public order. Let's fix that. So when you expand a city, you use one of the population surplus, and then it actually grows on the map. Hooray! Look at that. How awesome. Alright. So what do we want to build here? We want to build... Uh, we already have food coming in. We have a food surplus of five. Yeah, we want a public forum here as well. <laughs> Just to really help with public order. Okay. And then this cat... At your command. We're going to want to recruit... Some more Hastate. You can recruit up to three guys in, in one turn. Uh, when they are recruiting, they become stationary, um, and they won't move until they get, you know, until they get those units. Um, all right, and we are not researching anything. Let's go ahead and research supply reforms. All right, we should be good. I suppose I should also increase my fleets as well. Quartermaster's report. There we go. Alright. So let's, let's go ahead and get this cat some more ships. Ready for orders. This guy's got enough dudes, I think. What is here in Velathria? They only have the one summit building, so that they're okay. Yeah, they're Ready not going to the defend themselves from crap. What do you wish of me? But just for extra giggles, let's go ahead and try to sabotage these guys. Commit arson. I don't want to commit arson. Let's go ahead and poison the wells. I do enjoy a little sabotage. Do it. Yeah, success. Success is all I want. That should have. Yep. Got her a bonus. How may I serve you? Let's go ahead and get her an upgrade. So on the upgrade screen, um. Oh, I guess I should kind of talk about that. So. Commander. On the screen for like the generals. Like when you're looking at the at the unit at the at the detail view, for the army. I don't think I talked about this. Um. 
so this have the, has the force detail. Any traditions that this um, overall that this army picks up. You can look at the general itself, which it has the general's overall skills, their household. So if they have a wife, if they have any, um, um, oh, what are those called? Like entourages, like hangers on, like people who follow them around. Um, and then any um, personality traits they might have picked up. Uh, the exact same thing goes with spies. No, not Nicholas. I'm not the spy. The spy also has traits. They have a household, but they can't get married. And they also have skills that they can acquire, just like the general. So I believe with spies, cunning is more important than zeal and authority. I could be wrong, because I do not necessarily know. I don't know what they do for spies yet. Um, but this guy already has some pretty high cunning. I think cunning is more important for spies. That would be good if we want to go ahead and attach the spy to a army, which I don't know if we want to do that. I think we want to have the spy be independent. And so we want the spy to evade enemy agents. Alright. Cool, cool. Alright, so that's good. Go ahead and check out our provinces. So that's almost done. We need military upgrades for that one. Bondissimo. Syracuse. We have a bomb. Oh, alright. And I guess down here at the bottom, when you're looking at the thing, so it'll tell you what the garrison is, and the the uh, if they have a port, what their what their garrison is for their port, like what what military ships. They, if if you have no military protecting your your homes, um, it'll tell you what they what they can muster to defend themselves. Which kind of I wouldn't say negates the need for, but kind of um, I guess kind of negates the need <laughs> to have armies all over the place guarding all of your cities. Ready for further orders. Okay, so we want to get. Are we still in? Yeah, we're still in Roman right. territory. We want to go ahead and get all the way up here. We want to try to cut this guy off because he's going to send some guys down this way. Ready uh, for orders. This guy has enough, and we managed to poison their well. We take this settlement for Let's Rome. go ahead and lay siege. Alright, so we have an overwhelming strength of force. So we could go in and assault these guys, we can encircle them, or we can see what would happen with an auto resolve. So. Auto resolve for this one um, looks pretty good. Chances of winning very high. We can go in with aggressive stance, a balanced stance, or a, a protective stance. Um, yeah, we'll retreat if things get out of control. The stance is usually more effective when you have missile superiority. Um, we have a pretty balanced force, though. Actually, no, you know what? Screw these guys. When the enemy has missile superiority, they do not. Retreat will not be an option for any of the sides. Expect higher casualties. Let's go ahead and do balance dance. Yeah, right in the face. Suck a dick. Alright, so we only lost 164 men. We killed almost all of their guys and we captured 70. So at the end of a battle you have well this isn't really at, at the end of a regular battle with an army on the field you have the option to either let them go enslave them or kill them and it's pretty similar once you take over a settlement so you have the option to occupy it peacefully which lets all your captives go uh, it has the least amount of provincial instability which is the province overall so this this actually affects um roma and uh Nipolis as well. Anything we do to this settlement will affect Roman Nepolis. Uh, we can loot, which we gain the most money from, but in this case it's only 671, so I mean it's a bit for early on, but not enough for us to really do it, because it gives a huge provincial instability negative, um, which takes some, a lot of time to recover from. 
and all the captives are enslaved, which really pisses a lot of people off. Uh, and then we can just raise the city, which we kill everyone here, we destroy all the buildings. Um, public order is reduced, not as much as enslavement, but much more than occupy. So we're actually just going to go ahead and occupy. Because we want this to be as smooth a transition between ownership as possible. And that gave our general, At your command. I believe, yes, uh, he all it up. So we want to go ahead and give him a new trait. So he's pretty even overall. We want to go ahead and give him authority. Authority is pretty important for a general. Um, cunning and zeal. Yeah, that's personal combat prowess. And cunning is understanding of, yeah, against, uh, protects him from agents. Actually, let's see. How can I be of assistance? Uh, security against authority based. Uh, capacity for substitute subterfuge and espionage. Strength and capacity for manipulation. Resolve and capacity for hostility. Okay, so this is agent agent bank combat. This is cunning is actually attacking like settlements and shit. I'm not entirely sure what manipulation is, but whatevs. Where is our other guy? He's just hanging out. So actually, before we go any farther north, we want to go ahead and get this guy some more dudes. Do we want to come back south again to come up this way, or do we want to go around the northern part? I think I want to go around the northern part. Uh, let's go ahead and get this guy some more Hestai and some more Velatas. Uh, these Le these Levi's we can actually probably disband. Commander. Oh, this guy's a bunch of Levi's as well. So let's Ready do that. Yeah. Let's get you some Levi's because they're cheaper. <laughs> I wonder if doing that actually spent the money anyway. I was not paying attention. Oh well. Okay, so we should be done. We're not done. We have one turn left. What are these cats doing? Oh, no, okay. So this is one is... This is... Hmm, interesting. So this is four already. This one is one. That was when we take our medium. We'll find out, won't we? Research complete. Soldiers have strong backs to carry more than just their armor. Alright. Household expands. So the general has acquired... Um... Op Optio. Uh, which gives him cavalry morale upon recruitment. Nice. Household expands. Um... He acquired a Gladius. Okay. Construction report. Public forms complete. Quartermaster report. Household expands. Uh, the general acquired... Okay, so... When you get... More, like... So, so, like, each person can only have, like, one hanger-on, one addition, one household. Um, so you can either replace... When they get a new one, you can either replace their, their their current one with one of the new ones, or you can send it to the pool. Um, yeah, so we'll do that. Shipwrights report. Okay. So we're actually going to go ahead and send this ship to blockade this port over here. Set up a blockade. Yeah, you suck a dick. Oh, crap. They actually have quite a few guys here. Maintain blockade. blockade set up. Can you still recruit troops while you're blockading? Ah, uh, you totally can. But you are suffering attrition. Uh, so I probably don't want to do that yet. Hmm, screw it. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Okay. 
So you are still recruiting. Send you over to Armenium. Or Armium. No further orders. What do you have for us? They only have a port. Commander. So, oh, right. So, overall. So, as you can see, uh, just taking Velathria has affected public order in all of us, in all, like, in Roma and in Nepolis as well. Um. So I didn't show it last turn, but it, there was the reason why it's so low now, why it's the current is so low, is because whenever you take it for one turn after um, a peaceful occupy, there's a minus 25 percent or minus 25 to public order. So your overall province takes a huge hit, and then there's provincial instability, instability, which right now it's seven, but each turn that'll go down. So next turn it'll be minus six, then five, four, three, two, one, so on and so forth. All right. What do I want to do? I kind of want to experiment with this and see if this stays as one in when I take Armenium. Oh, let's go ahead and pick a new thing to research. So I think we want... Hmm, the training fields are kind of blah. I don't really care about those. I mean, they're all right, but they take up space. Space that I could be using for something else. I don't really want to do that. I kind of want to do this. At the same time, I'm in, uh, manipular barracks is pretty important. Let's go ahead and get that. And then you... We hunger for battle. We're going to go ahead and send south to block this pass. Is that all? What do you wish of me? You are going to go ahead and have Sabaduje. Don't want to commit our sins. Go ahead and poison the wells again. Sabotage. Boom. An excellent choice. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah successful. Is what I do. So when you poison the wells of an enemy settlement, I think what it does is it actually messes with their um, their garrison. Yeah, see, their garrison, they, they have less men in their garrison than they would have normally. Rari, plebes, and levies versus Italian spearmen, mobs, and levies slingers. And then they just have a regular, regular dock. Uh, I kind of want to upgrade this to a fishing port. Down here in Nepolis. Maybe a harbor. No, a fishing port for food would be more important. Anyway, we'll, we'll worry about city management in a bit because I can get kind of caught up in that. Okay, what are you building? Oh, uh, certain buildings, also, like certain settlements, also provide uh, bonuses. Like this provides olive oil, and this one provides wine. And you can kind of tell because it's got that little, um, ah, what is that? That little wine and the little olive, like the little the little symbol above it. So it lets you know what um, materials that that place is is making for you. Thanks so much for watching, and join us next time on Total War Rome Two. And remember, don't panic, get manic.